This is a review of the TrendNet AC2600 TEW827DRU router uh, that supports a gigabyte uh, wired connections as well as Wi-Fi both on the 2.4 gigahertz channel and the 5 gigahertz channel. The router comes with the basic router model, um, quick installation guide, a DVD which basically has the user's guide plus the quick installation guide again, power cord and a network cable. Um, so let's run through this a little bit. Uh, basically this router is as you see here. The back of the router has uh, two USB 3.0 connectors. It has a small switch, it's a little bit hard to see there, which allows you to turn the front LEDs on and off. I really like that actually because some of those LEDs can be pretty bright at night. It has the WPS switch there which allows you to push and instantly connect to another device that is listening at that time, making it a lot easier to connect than having to type in, say, a very complex password. That's particularly useful for one a, a, a device that doesn't have a built-in keyboard, for example. It has the network cable in, the four gigabit network cables out. It's got uh, Wi-Fi on and off, so if you just want to use it as a wired router, you can turn the Wi-Fi off. Reset button and uh, power, basically, and then the uh, input power module. Um, let's talk about the speeds now. I compared the TrendNet to the router I'm currently using, which is a Linksys AC1900 that I purchased a little over a year ago. The Linksys has been reliable and I've uh, uh, had no problem using it, so I ran a series of tests. The devices I've used, I've got two computers with wired connections to the router. I've got two laptops I'm using, one which is a fairly recent model that I use for my work, and another that's five years old that's my personal laptop. The latter only supports the 2.4 gigahertz, gigahertz band, so that's an interesting test to look at the speed there. I also was able to test with a device that uh, plugs into my television. It's the MXQ Pro uh, TV uh, device that competes with something like the Fire TV or the Apple TV. I've also tested it with the Galaxy Tab Pro tablet and my Kindle 8.9 inch tablet from a couple of years ago. So the speeds I got for the wired connections were, as expected, identical, uh, within the limits of just normal variations on speeds. They're both gigabit connections and both wired computers displayed within just a, a, a few gigabit, a few uh, bytes of each other. The, the more recent laptop in the 5 gigahertz band displayed roughly the same amount of speed as well and in both cases uh, both the Linksys and the TrendNet was basically maxing out the connector so I had no problem there. The uh, interesting place was when we started looking at the 2.4 gigahertz band in each of these cases because most of these devices could connect to either the 5 gigahertz band or the 2.4 and where I found the real differences was in the 2.4 band. At the 5 gigahertz band, both the Linksys and the TrendNet were, had comparable performance. In the 2.4 gigahertz band, usually the TrendNet won pretty easily, but there was one notable exception. So the Galaxy Tab Pro had significantly greater performance on the 2.4 gigahertz band. Uh, 47.7 uh, megabits per second versus 35. The Kindle also showed some pretty significant uh, increases going from 57 up to 82 with the TrendNet. So TrendNet's winning this one hands down so far. MXQ Pro television uh, device is same. It went from 34 to 43. The one exception, interestingly enough, was the Lenovo laptop. Now that is the only one of these devices that is using five-year-old technology. And in this case, the uh, Linksys router really blew away the TrendNet. Uh, so I saw a pretty significant drop-off in performance for the TrendNet versus the Linksys. A uh, difference of uh, something like 78 going down to 46. That's still an acceptable speed, and in this case, I think the real problem was the Lenovo laptop itself, which is, as I said, five years old. 
For anything more recent, on the 5 GHz band, I would expect this to compete with anything in the market. And the 2.4 GHz band, I would, it's basically beating um, my Linksys and doing a pretty handy job of it. The interesting thing about this one is supposed to be things like uh, gaming, uh, multi, uh, handling multiple connections at once. The trouble is I'm not really equipped to test that. All I can tell you is that I was using this for a media server, um, I was using my tablet, I had my television playing across the network, and this thing had no problem handling all of these, and I did not see a problem at all in the couple of weeks that I tested this. So I would have no hesitation about substituting this as my primary router. This is a serious, professional quality, high-speed router. So we've established that the speed is good, what about the setup? Uh, setup? Yes and no. So yes, the setup is actually quite easy. Uh, the If you look at all of the various options on this router, there are literally dozens. You can get, uh, but you can basically only use one or two of them and the device has good defaults and you never have to go into those other screens and play around with those other settings unless you choose to. Where it fell down a little bit was when you plug all this in and you put the DVD in, it is a wizard pops up in your browser that is supposed to be basically just a three-step wizard and you're done. Trouble is, the first step of the wizard kept popping up multiple times. I would enter something and then another instance of the first page of the wizard would pop up. It took me four or five tries before I was finally able to complete the, the, the three-page wizard. So something in my system, it simply was not registering this properly, and the router was not recognizing that it had already popped up the first page of the wizard. This was a minor nuisance, not a major one, and I basically a little bit of patience, and I was able to get past the problem. I had no problem getting it set up, though, and getting it, every device recognizing it automatically. Uh, it was easy to make all these connections. There was really nothing complex that I had to do. The other issue that I had a little bit of problem with was the universal plug-and-play. This is supposed to be a standard that just about any software program running on your computer can recognize so that it, the router can automatically open an outside channel when you authorize that. I have a, a media server running on a PC and it needs to open an outside connection so that devices connecting to that server can connect properly. And what I found is the, the, that media server, in this case it's something called PlayOn, had no problem opening a UPnP channel on the Linksys, but it refused to recognize the TrendNet. This was not an insurmountable obstacle. I simply had to manually open a port and tell PlayOn which port I was opening, and after that everything worked properly. But this is one case where you might have some problems and UPnP is not completely universal. I queried the manufacturer to see if I could get an answer for this and did not receive a response. So I don't know whether the issue is with PlayOn or the issue is something with the router. Everything else I tried, however, worked. Uh, the number of options are just literally overwhelming, but you can certainly do child protection, for example, set up an FTP server, uh, plug in um, a drive on the USB 3 and have that be available at any anything that connects to this router that can then see the data on that drive. All of these things worked seamlessly. Uh, the, drive, uh, the router just worked as expected, so you can get as simple or as complicated as you like. This is true professional quality. The price is competitive with anything in the market. Uh, and overall, I was really very pleased with the results and can recommend this unreservedly.